Airbus is the largest aircraft manufacturer, surpassing its biggest competitor, Boeing, in terms of orders. Airbus is renowned for its best-selling aircraft, the A320 family, with over 10,000 aircraft sold. Additionally, they have the A350 XWB, which has received over 900 orders and has delivered about 400 aircraft. However, they have lost to Boeing in one aspect. Despite Airbus's success with most aircraft series, they have struggled with the A330neo, which has not sold well. So why no one wants this A330neo? Let's explore the reasons for today's episode. Let's take a look at the order numbers for the siblings of this A330neo family. As of May 2024, a total of 10,508 A320neo aircraft have been ordered by over 130 customers, with 3,371 aircraft delivered. Its sibling, the A350XWB, is equally impressive, contributing around 1,000 orders with 602 aircraft delivered as of May 2024. So, what about the A330neo? It is disappointing that since its launch in 2014, the A330neo has only sold 12 A330-800 aircraft. In contrast, its sibling, the A330-900, delivered 124 aircraft, which is not very significant. The sales numbers of both the A330-800 and A330-900 are worrying. So what is the reason why no one wants this aircraft? Firstly, in the wide-body aircraft segment, the previous series is selling very well, and these aircraft are not yet old enough for replacement by airlines. The operational lifespan of an A330-300 is 17 and a half years from its launch. For example, in the A330 CEO series, Delta Airlines operates 42 aircraft dedicated to American Airlines 24, Air Canada 17, Cathay Pacific 32, Emirates 29, and Air France 15, all in use. In addition, the A350 has received 1,000 orders, with Qatar Airways operating 53, Cathay Pacific 44, Delta Airlines 18, and Lufthansa 18, all in use. Talking about aircraft with many different sizes, the A320 family has sold over 10,000 aircraft, with Delta Airlines operating 228, American Airlines 400, United Airlines 270, and Lufthansa 170, all in use. Whether it's the A330-800 or the A330-900, the sales figures are very modest compared to previous aircraft models. Secondly, the A330neo has more seats in the cabin, but the increase is insignificant. This does not make the A330neo stand out from the previous series of aircraft. Additionally, the A330neo has a long range, which is not necessary for medium haul routes, where a longer range translates to higher costs. The large fuel tanks help the A330 fly further, but also increase costs. Although the A330neo has upgrades compared to the A330 CEO, such as better fuel efficiency and new engines, these upgrades are not sufficient to persuade airlines to replace their current aircraft, especially when compared to newer models like the A350 or Boeing. 787. Economic factors are an important aspect that Airbus did not fully consider. The global aviation industry has faced numerous economic challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic. This has led to reduced demand for new aircraft as airlines prioritize financial stability and recovery over expanding or replacing their fleets. The only advantage of the A330neo is its long range, but Airbus did not focus on the niche market, especially with the A330-800, which focuses on long range and low passenger capacity. Why is it said that the passenger capacity is low? Compared to other wide-body aircraft designed for long-haul flights, such as the A350-900 with a maximum of 440 seats, and the A350-1000 with a maximum of 480 seats, the capacity of the A330neo is not significant. This combination is unpopular because most airlines prefer aircraft with higher passenger capacity for long-haul flights or more efficient operations on medium-haul routes. This sole advantage does not work well because it is not suitable for short and medium-haul flights, leading to higher costs. If airlines stubbornly push the A330neo for long-haul flights, it will create many disadvantages because it isn't suitable. In fact, the A330neo was created to replace the older generation, A330CEO, which is only 12 years old. However, instead of choosing the A330neo to replace their fleets, airlines chose the Dreamliner. Why did airlines choose the Dreamliner over the A330neo? But before we proceed, if you find this content interesting, please like, share the video, and leave a comment below.
When flying long haul, passengers always prefer seats on a wide and comfortable aircraft that provide ample space to relax and enjoy comfort during the flight. Therefore, wide body aircraft are typically the preferred choice in this segment. Although both are wide body aircraft, the seat design upgrades in the A330neo are not significant. Furthermore, in terms of comfort, it does not compare to the Dreamliner. We will analyze why customers choose the Dreamliner over the A330neo in the following section. Notably, Airbus chose to prioritize range over over passengers' comfortable capacity when designing the A330neo, making it more suitable for shorter routes rather than long-haul flights. Due to the design of the A330neo, it is only suitable for short and medium routes than long haul. Moreover, the additional fuel tanks that extend the A330neo's range also increase its operating costs. In contrast, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner is known for its higher fuel efficiency compared to the A330neo, which helps reduce costs. It also has sufficient range to fly without the need for additional fuel tanks like the A330neo. It is clear that the Boeing 787 Dreamliner is a more cost effective effective choice. In addition, the Dreamliner provides an enhanced passenger experience through higher cabin pressure and higher humidity levels on board, which have been proven to reduce fatigue from time zone differences and passenger discomfort due to dry cabin air. When flying on a long-haul flight, lasting several hours, passenger comfort is a priority, and Boeing has successfully addressed this. Therefore, it is easy to understand why airlines prioritize the Dreamliner. This enhances Boeing's marketing capabilities even further. The Dreamliner has shown strong development in the market and has received more orders than the A330neo. This may be due to the Boeing 787's strong competition in providing efficiency and a superior passenger experience. The final reason is the lower cost per seat, based on the lighter airframe and lower fuel consumption rate, which makes the Dreamliner the top choice for many medium haul routes. Specific examples of airlines turning away from the A330neo and opting for the Dreamliner are noteworthy, such as major airlines Air France and KLM. Both Air France and KLM operated a 330 CEO aircraft but shifted towards using the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. When it comes to this aircraft size, the latest orders exclude the A330neo. Another example is Hawaiian Airlines, which operates a large fleet of A330 CEO aircraft, well suited for the medium haul market connecting Hawaii's islands with the continental United States. Hawaiian initially ordered six A330-800S to replace their current A330 fleet, but later canceled and switched to the Dreamliner, because according to their CEO, buying planes that nobody else wants is probably not the greatest idea. Additionally, Saudia and EBA Air are notable, with Saudia placing a significant order for dozens of 787 Dreamliners despite operating a fleet of over 30 A330-300S. Meanwhile, EVA Air, which currently owns 12 A330neos, placed orders for five Dreamliners in March and 18 A350s in November. Furthermore, United Airlines chose the Boeing 787 Dreamliner to expand its capacity and replace older aircraft in its fleet. Also, AirAsia X opted for the Dreamliner instead of the A330neo to upgrade their fleet and expand their international route network. Completely overshadowed by the Boeing, 787 Dreamliner, does the A330neo still have any prospects? The success of the Boeing 787 could paradoxically lead to future challenges due to its popularity. If Boeing's order backlog for the 787 becomes excessively large, airlines may choose to order the Airbus A330neo instead, simply to meet their capacity needs and start flying passengers sooner. This situation highlights how a product's overwhelming success can create delays that drive potential customers to competitors. Regarding the Airbus A330neo program, its success has been more modest compared to the Boeing 787. The A330neo was designed as a more cost-effective update to the older A330 model, featuring more efficient engines and improved aerodynamics. While it offers benefits in terms of lower operating costs and enhanced performance compared with the A330 CEO, it hasn't matched the groundbreaking advancements or the market excitement generated by the 787. The A330neo appeals to airlines looking for reliable, efficient aircraft without the long wait times associated with Boeing's backlogged 787. However, its success is somewhat limited by the intense competition from both the 787 and the newer Airbus A350. 
Airlines weighing their options might choose the A330neo primarily for its availability rather than its technological edge. Some argue that the A330neo will never sell as many units as its direct competitor, the Boeing 787, but it is significantly cheaper and was brought to market much faster. Every sale of the A330neo impacts the 787's market share, while the A350 erodes the 787's market share from the top end. Therefore, even though the A330neo is not a top seller, it is still a very successful and profitable project for Airbus. As for you, what do you think? Do you know how many orders the A300 received in 1976? Just one. And that was after nearly a year without any orders. Eventually, they sold 561 units. So let's wait and see how A330 Neo orders will pick up in a few years. Lufthansa also waited many years before ordering their first 787 and 777. The A330 Neo is certainly poised to increase its market share in the future.